Hi, I'm Jennifer Taylor. I'm going to explain the tools that you use for oil painting. There are so many tools out there that it can be very confusing. So I'm going to show you the tools that I use and it's specifically for oil painting, wet into wet. It could also be used for painting wet over dry. But again, I'm just helping you narrow down and maybe understand the application of tools and how they work. Okay, so these are some of the tools in my toolbox that I use for painting. Oil paints. And this is an excessive amount in my opinion, but it does everything I need whenever I need it. And it gives me some options. All the way from, I kind of put them from left to right as I start, maybe get in the middle. And then really some of the rollers and the knives and things to the right, I use all through the process after I get my first layer of paint in. And the mall stick is used at the very, very end for any detail that I may want. So uh, a, a, a bunch of paper towels is definitely necessary. So I'm talking about tools specifically, not paint or mediums. So I'll go over each one of these a little more detail. Okay, so on the left over here, we have the smaller, this is how I start a, a painting with a smaller, this is a number two flat, no, this is an aught, a zero flat. And I use it for sketching, my initial sketch, you can tell it's a little roughed up because I use it a lot and I'll scrub and draw with that. This I also use for drawing and scrubbing. This is a, I do not use these very much. By the way, these are synthetics and nylon by Rosemary and Company. They're the ivories. I'm going to throw them on the floor. But this one is a um, hog's bristle. Not my favorite. One thing it does is put a lot of paint on and make solid brush strokes that you'll see but you do not want to continue using this throughout your painting process unless you want to pull off the paint. These are also bristles. Bristles are a lot thicker and they do not, they're not soft at all. So they're kind of like a brush. You can see how stiff it is. The ivory is wonderful. I love it as a synthetic. Look how limber it is. It's kind of springy. And I use that for most of my paintings. I also love the Shira, which is, all of these are from Rosemary, but you can choose any brand that you want at the store. But I'm just showing you the flexibility of, you don't want it too flexible. You want it just enough and some thin options so you can keep it nice and flat and stiff lines. This is a filbert. <clears throat> so if a filbert is round on the top, these are great when you want to make not so flat, straight lines like that one, but you want to make maybe flowers or have some little more organic shapes on the side. This might be nice. I don't use this, as you can tell. It is a... dagger. <laughs> Tells you how often I use it. So this would be good. As you can see, some of you might like it for making straight lines. I, I love this. A friend of mine showed me this. But this is maybe after I get my thick layer of paint down with one of these. First I draw it. Then I put my big thick layers of paint, just solid strokes down. I might go through it with this. I also might use the Bondo over here that you can buy from probably, I don't know, Walmart, Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure where I can get a Bondo. So think about that. I've got all my knives over there and a roller, a soft roller. So if I want to soften any edges, there's all kinds of brushes to do that. This is a sable. It's real hair and it's very soft, as you can see. Um, it's good for dust. I call it dusting the paint, but just brushing lightly on your on your canvas, not for lifting a lot of paint and putting it on there. I, I see people mistakenly just dipping this into the paint. This is an expensive brush. 
and you don't want to do that. You just barely touch the paint to the tip. And really, that should be true of all of your brushes. Don't really get it where it's deep down in the ferrules. This is another soft brush. Look how it's popped out there. And it's great also for blending if you want to blend. This is a little more narrow one. I don't have a fan brush with me, but fan brushes are great for this too. Look at that. These are also real hair brushes. The mop. Wonderful for dusting bigger pieces. Look at that. Oh, do not dip this in your paint. I see people doing that. That's not really wise because it's too hard to clean out. It is literally for dusting. If I wanted to dust this area right here, I'm just going to show you. I think this is dry paint, but it would just be for blending this area. Or if I want to pull paint into that area, I can do it just a little at a time. And then I wash the end of it <clears throat> off. So you might end your painting with a thinner brushes here that also, and your rounds. I didn't talk about a round. I don't use <clears throat> rounds. This might be considered a round. I don't use them often unless I'm making very fine detail at the very end. This is my last brush I use, which is a, um, it's a rigger and it's for signatures. So see that? rigor. And I have a barrage of knives that I use. These are just three of my favorites. And I use that for also blending the edges of paint when it's really thick, <clears throat> taking off paint, moving paint around. You can also use one of these foam brushes for blending or removing. This can be used for multiple things and it's a soft brush that they use for screen printing. A brush, a roller, and as you can see, I've got a little paint on there. I need to get that off. But anyway, I keep it. That's what made this line right here. So this is a fun experiment that I did because I recently took a, an abstraction workshop with Larry Moore. Last but not least, you may want the mall stick, which holds on the side of your paint like that. And you can rest your arm on it and do fine detail. That is to keep your hand from shaking so much. The wheel, the water well, or the mineral spirits well, whatever you use. This is a must too. I see a lot of people just with jars. But I think this is the best. And I'll tell you why. Because you wash your brush. It washes off on this. See if I can keep the light still here. And you can see all the dirt coming up. But you wash it off that grate on the top. Getting all the paint off your, off your brush. And then you, have, you can pull this out, clean it, and then dump your spirits out. I don't know if you can see what's in there. Um, but it becomes mud all down in there, and that keeps your brush clean. Otherwise, you're just washing clean, dirty brushes off into dirty mineral spirits, and it doesn't really look good on your painting. And also, you're going to need tons of paper towels, so just keep that stocked. All right, thank you. I hope you've learned a lot about some art tools today and how to use them and what you'll need to for painting oil paint. This is Jennifer Taylor, and thank you for listening.